Well, after spending three long months slowly uh, pecking away at this enclosure, I finally finished it and I've been running this enclosure for about three to four months now. And I uh, thought it'd be a good time to do a, a video on it. So this build was inspired by Myers Woodshop. Uh, his channel is uh, the place that I got the idea for this one by one aluminum extrusion. Um, it was a little pricey uh, to get, but all in all, I'm glad that I went with it. I would totally do it again because I love the build. I love how everything came together. I love how we got these grooves for all my paneling to, to fit in real nicely. Um, before I get too far ahead of myself, I'll talk about the table. I originally started with the uh, with a five in or five foot by four foot table, which is what One Foot Indie recommends. Uh, this is the woodworker version, by the way, so it's a little bigger. Um, so I had a five foot by four foot table, and then once I figured out how big I wanted my enclosure to be, I just kind of cut my table down a little further to size. And if you want any of these specs, I'll I'll find a way to give them to you. I'll put them in the description or I'll put my SketchUp file in the description or something if you're planning on building one. Um, so obviously the main purpose of this was to keep uh, the dust from going everywhere. Um, but I was hoping that a byproduct would be to cut down on the noise. So other people I've seen used uh, 16th inch plexiglass. I used a quarter inch acrylic. So that's uh, in the front and then in the back and on the top, I used a uh, half inch MDF. To hopefully give a little thicker uh, to cut down on that noise a little more. So it actually works really well. I'll give you a noise demo here in a little bit. But I'll talk a few more about uh, some of the features I got. Um, the display, uh, that was one of the things that really bugged me of having to bend over and touch the display because I'm a little taller. So. This is kind of like perfectly eye height for me just to come in and select my program. So I like that. Um, let's see, let's talk about brackets. So as I was looking for this extrusion on Amazon, I saw some aluminum brackets, but they were really expensive and I needed about like 50 of them. So what I did is I just laser cut a whole bunch of these out of eighth inch acrylic on my Glowforge laser cutter. Um, and my thought was probably the first thought you're having right now is acrylic is really brittle and it can snap really easily. But what I did, I was afraid of it snapping. So I put rubber washers everywhere just to make sure I wouldn't accidentally snap it. And this enclosure isn't really being bumped or moved around a lot. So it's not really under continual stresses. And I've moved it a bunch of times and it hasn't snapped. So I haven't broke a single one. So it's actually worked out really well. Maybe these rubber washers help uh, help it give a little bit before it snaps. So that's worked out really well. I had to make like 50 of them. Um, if you are planning on doing a build similar and you have a, a laser cutter, you want to cut some of these out, email me. I'll shoot you the file that I used. Um, let's see about the height of this. This is kind of tall. Most people kind of do like more of a 24 inch one, but again, I'm a little taller and I hate just kind of crouching in and having to work on the, my work piece. So um, I can kind of just get my head in there pretty easy if I need to hold down my workpiece or whatnot. And I can crawl in there pretty easy too, which is fun if I need to get something way in the back. Um, let's see here. I'll talk about the door. Um, I really like just having one big open door. Um, for whatever reason, I think I was worried about real estate as far as having doors opening to the side. So I like the idea of having it just come straight down. So I have simple little latch up top, um, acrylic just to open it, something simple. And then it comes down pretty easy. And now I can just uh, get in here pretty easily to do whatever I need to do. Um, let's see, also talk about some of these uh, 3D printed elements. The handle that I just grabbed a hold of, as well as these uh, hinges on each side. Also, this guy for the controller, the wrench holder, and then also this large mount to hold the hose on. All of this I found on Etsy. I think it's called Rowdy Roman is the Etsy store. I don't know the guy. I don't get compensated for giving a shout out, but I absolutely loved these files. They worked perfectly. I just bought each one of them for, I think like two bucks and then 3D printed it myself, which is a no brainer. I spend two hours designing it myself or just buy it for two bucks and print it. So those worked out really well. Um, let's see what else I can talk about here. 
As far as the assembly of this, I started with my rectangular base all the way around. I had some corner brackets um, I put in each corner. And then these are the only brackets I actually bought. Everything else um, I just made myself. And then after that, I just kind of assembled each vertical member and then started sliding in my either acrylic or MDF panels and then just buttoned up the roof at the end. Um, let's see. So let's talk a little bit about wiring. <clears throat> um, I hate wires. Most of us do. Uh, so that was a big driving factor is try to hide the wires as much as I can. So here, I just drilled a hole, dropped the wire straight down. Usually this wire would run all the way across. Um, this one dropped it straight down too. And then you can see here, uh, which controls the Y axis, those guys I dropped straight down to. That one concerned me a little bit because, I'll put the rapid on kind of high. This guy is gonna be moving back and forth and I don't want those wires to get yanked at all. So I just bored a pretty good size hole. I think I got maybe like a one inch hole. That way there's enough clearance for them to move around and not get snagged. I took the, um, the zip ties off so the zip ties wouldn't get snagged as they're going through that hole. And so around here, <coughs> um, so that comes down here. I have the whole control unit just mounted uh, underneath. So I just really love having all the wires out of the way. I don't have to worry about it. Um, usually you would have to plug your USB device in the back. So I just ran an extension so I can just kind of walk around, stick it in the side and I don't have to worry about reaching way under here either. So that works out really well. <clears throat> also, uh, this control unit has a very valuable button on it, the e-stop. If anything catastrophic happens, you can smash that thing. It's not in a good spot. For me, it's hard to reach. So I kind of created my own e-stop. I got a remote outlet switch right here. So everything is on the switch. Um, the router, I have a vacuum. I'll show you that in a minute. The controller, everything's hooked up on this one switch. So if something catastrophic is going on, I can just hit that. Everything's, everything's done. Um, I might actually put this, I might actually get another one for my vacuum. Sometimes it's nice to have a separate one for my vacuum if I just want to turn on the vacuum and vacuum up a little bit. Um, but that's how it is for now and it works pretty well. Um, I'll show you how the router and the vacuum work. So the, they are using a vacuum switch. So as soon as I turn the router on, um, actually it has like a five second delay. I turn the router on and then it will kick uh, the vacuum on. Uh, so I'll show you how that works. We'll see if you can actually hear the vacuum. I don't know how well you can hear this, but router's on. Now that was the vacuum, if you can hear that or not. <clears throat> now router's off, vacuum runs a little bit. Runs a lot of bit. Okay, now that's off. Yep, so everything's hooked up to this uh, one button, so it's kind of a nice way to shut everything down quick if I need to. Um, let's see, what else? Let me show you uh, the vacuum in the back here. Um, this thing is a beast. It weighs a lot, so I'm gonna have a hard time maybe moving it around. But we'll see if I can move her quickly for you. Let's see if this extension cord will reach or not. Okay, there we go. Um, <clears throat> so a funny thing, um, about this was, I said my main goal was dust. Everyone's main goal is dust. I was hoping it would cut down on the noise too. Um, so I assembled the enclosure. I was running a job and I can't hear the router. I mean, I can hear the router, but definitely not as bad as it was. But then the funny thing, the vacuum actually became louder than the, the router itself. So I built a, an enclosure for the vacuum. So this is three quarter inch MDF all the way around. It was still a little loud, so I put a whole bunch of soundproofing in there too. And once I got the soundproofing in there, uh, then it worked out really nicely. It's really, really quiet. And I'll try to give you a noise demo here in a minute. Um, I do have a whole bunch of holes 
punched in here underneath so that the vacuum can breathe a little bit and a few on the back side too so it doesn't get too hot but that works out really nice and the vacuum is uh, really quiet now this is just a uh, i think it's a six peak horsepower 99 bucks from home depot so that works out pretty well yeah, try and put this back I love having everything on wheels. It uh, just makes life so much better. I'm always moving things around here in the shop too, so. Um, all right, noise demo. So right now I have my router at, uh, I think two and a half, which is usually what I keep it at. So here's kind of with the door open, what that sounds like. Now door's closed. Definitely cuts down on the noise quite a bit. This vacuum works so well, you can actually kind of hear airflow coming through the, <laughs> the gaps a little bit, which is funny. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but. So that's that. Well, uh, I think I pretty much covered everything. Um, again, nothing uh, crazy or uh, insanely innovative uh, a lot of people have very similar enclosures but just thought i'd kind of add to the body of knowledge that already exists out there um, hopefully it's an inspiration to someone out there if you have any other ideas of how i can improve mine i'd love to hear it i always love improving uh, things i got um, if you want anything here um, to use as a reference maybe if you want to use the table or this whole enclosure as a reference uh, let me know. I'll probably put something in the description. I'll probably put maybe my SketchUp file or something, but if it's not there, uh, let me know or shoot me an email and I'll try and get this for you. I'll also put some links uh, to some of the things I, I use to make this happen down below too. So thanks for tuning in and uh, checking out this enclosure. And uh, again, if you have any comments, let me know and uh, catch you next time.